video we'll have a look at editing the time-lapse sequence. You might remember I shot a time-lapse sequence on the coast of Cork. Now to edit there are several different ways you can do it and I'm going to have a look at four different ways. I'm going to have a look at using Photoshop, Lightroom, After Effects and also Premiere Pro. They all have their pros and cons but perhaps the problem that most people have uh, is Photoshop. So I'm going to have a look at Photoshop first. So let's have a look at that now. I'm going to have a look now at editing the time-lapse sequence I shot and I shot this one in JPEG and I'm going to use Photoshop now to edit it. So you can see the folder there I've got with my JPEG images and it was of a uh, view from the balcony from the hotel I was staying in. So I'm going to use that now as a, a time-lapse sequence. So what I'm going to do is just open up Photoshop and I'm going to just open, go to File and Open and I'm just going to select all formats and there's the JPEG. So what you do is I'm going to click on the very first one in the sequence and just click on there where it says image sequence and then open. And by doing that you get this which is frame rate. Well I'm going to, you can choose any one but 24 is a good one for video so I'm going to choose 24 frames per second. And that then imports the uh, images in a sequence or a layer. Here you can see a video layer down the bottom. It's called the video group here at the right hand side. So this is native to uh, Photoshop CS6. It was in the extension to Photoshop uh, CS5 I think as well. So there, there it is. So what I want to do now is basically edit it. You can actually play it there, preview it, albeit slowly as it kind of partly renders it there as you can see by pressing the play button. You can also add uh, music to it as well, which I'll have a look at in a second. But let's do the editing first of the picture. So if you were to change image, you would normally go up to image and adjustments and use these items here, which you, you can use. But the problem here is if you go in and, for example, I want to change the shadows and highlights here. You get this box turns up and I want to make, bring the highlights down to make it more dramatic. And adjust that there, bring it down even more. I click on OK. Now the only problem I have there is that's fine but it only applies to that one frame because if I move it onto the next frame you can see it doesn't apply. Move it back it doesn't apply. So only to that one frame did it apply. So what I want to do is apply that effect to all of the whole of the uh, sequence. So I'm going to go back to where I was using the history uh, uh, option here. Back to right at the beginning. And what I'm going to do this time is you need to change that layer. I right click on it there convert it to a smart object. You can do the same thing by going up to layer, smart objects and convert to smart objects, same thing. So once you convert, convert it to a smart object and go into image adjustments and this time I can go down to shadows and highlights for example and change the shadows. I want to maybe bring them down a little bit there and the highlights I want to bring them down a good bit maybe to about there for example. And then you can see if I go back into image adjustments, now that it's a smart object, the other options are actually greyed out. So what I need to do here is use instead an adjustment layer. So I go to layer, new adjustment layer. I've got all the options there to create adjustment layers for this sequence. So I'm going to, for example, I want to put a curve into the uh, shot, I'll give it a little bit more contrast. So you can see here you get the curve up here for that. That gives you a little bit of contrast there and you can see you get that curves adjustment layer appears above the layer and let's do another one do another adjustment layer let's this time do vibrance for example I might want to here you can see there the vibrance layer now adjustment layer and I increase the vibrance a little bit just there and the saturation probably not much because that's going to be very yellow there knock that down a bit and finally, new adjustment layer. I may want to change the colour balance. I might want to make it a little bit warmer, kind of a sunsetty look to it, because it was a sunset. So I can increase the reds a little bit, increase the greens a little bit there. And I want it a bit more yellow maybe to make it a little bit more like a sunset there. Okay, so that's say that's the look I kind of want for it. 
So that's the, that's the overall image. The next thing I want to do is to maybe add some music. So I'm going to go to click there, the audio track option at the bottom, add audio. And I'm just going to choose some audio I've had from before. Puts in an audio track there. If I play it, you can see. So I just want to go to the end. There. I've got to trim that to the right. You can see I can use the slider to minimize the length there of the tracks. I'm just going to drag that back, widen it out a little bit again. So that's now the right length. If you right click on that, that was a little bit too loud. So you can, by right clicking on the track, you can actually decrease the audio a bit. So I'm going to knock that down a bit. And I want to fade in and a fade out as well. So now if I play that from the beginning. I can also, if I want, add in a transition, a fade in or a fade out here. As you can see, I'm clicking that little box there. And I might want to fade there. If I grab that down, put that there, give me a fade in. And here, fade out. Or you might want to change that to a fade with black, for example. A fade with black out. And if they look, you can also edit them to be a bit shorter because this is quite a short little track so I don't want the fade in and out too long. And I can just pull that in a bit there. So I'll play that now should fade in. And fade out. Okay the last thing I'm going to do before I go to render this is to, to crop it the right dimensions for video or for HD, full HD video, and that's 16 uh, by 9. So for the crop, I'm going to go to crop there, and I'm going to change that to 16 by 9, so it will fit the uh, screen of the video. And I can choose my crop there, what I want to crop. Basically, I'm going to try and keep the pool side area and the entrance there. I've got enough of the sky there anyway, and crop it like that. And then I can go to render that. And you can see there, I can give it a name. I'm going to use Adobe Media Encoder. I can use QuickTime as well. I'm going to use H264 preset. Full HD, 1080p, 24 frames per second. You've got YouTube, uh, the formats down the bottom. And the preset size is correct, 24 frames per second. And that's it. I'm just going to then click on to render that. And that will take several minutes to render. OK, that's finished rendering. It took about five minutes. And I'm just going to play now the rendered video. Okay, we'll have a look now at opening and editing a raw image or a sequence of raw images in our time lapse in Photoshop. If I go to File and Open and go to where my raw sequence is, you can see it sees it okay, but I have a slight issue in that Photoshop can't actually import a raw sequence into Photoshop. You can see there the image sequence is uh, blanked out. We've actually got to convert it into a format it can actually read, be it a TIFF or a JPEG. So it's going to come out of that, close that there, and go instead into now File and Browse in Bridge. And with Bridge, it's a great file management utility, and it allows us to batch process a lot of the files, including changing them uh, into different formats. So uh, these are actually the files I have, I've, as you can see there in the folder. These are the raw images. And what I want to do is change them into a format that Photoshop can use to do the time lapse. But before I do that, I've got one other option I can do here because these are raw images. I can actually process these in Adobe Camera Raw from Bridge. So from here, I've selected, you can select any of the images. I've selected my first one. So I'm going to go to Opening Camera Raw. 
and this is, this is a great program it allows us to change an awful lot with the raw image we've taken so you can change for example the white balance there to I can change it to a shady one or a cloudy one or I can manually change it to warm it up a bit or to make it cooler etc I'm just going to leave it as it was and if you go to where it says basic and camera raw defaults that brings it back to where it was so I'm happy with the white balance on it and you can change things like you can make it lower exposure but probably the most useful tool here I think is to do the highlights and the shadows and if I want to bring down bring up the highlights or bring them down I can bring any highlights down for example and I can bring the shadows up a little bit I can raise the contrast a little bit as well and I can boost the whites a bit bring the blacks down a bit see there and we can add a little bit of apparent sharpening in the mid-tones using this clarity slider so you can go extreme but I'm not going to do that I'll probably go to about there bump up the vibrance a bit bump up the saturation a bit as well you can also if you want to add a curve go there to our second button there so we can drag that down a bit there drag that up a bit there for example and you can add in more sharpening if you want it adds a little bit by default anyway so I'm happy with that in any case you can also add local effects here so if you look at these effects along the top you can have a play around with those but a very useful one for landscapes is this graduated filter it's not really so useful here because I've got this sign in the middle but if you click on that you get this graduated filter screen appears here down the right hand side and if I put my mouse just at the top of the screen there where the cross is there and I just drag down you can see you can add in basically a grad filter and you can change the exposure setting on that way down to way up to overexpose it so I'm going to say leave it to about there let's make it a little bit more dramatic then I'm going to click over here come back to my main screen a little bit and that looks pretty good so I'm relatively happy with that I might try and bring the shadows up a little bit more there and I've done that so once you've done it you just have to click on done so if you want to go back to the way it was before have a look at it before you can either just go with the preview button up there for example or you can go back to camera or defaults and to go back to the settings I was just working on I'm going to go back to custom settings Anyway, once you've done that I'm just going to click on done and then you can see that image has now been changed if I in, in bridge you can see the thumbnail there that's the one before the one after and you can see so now the next thing is with the image I've just uh, altered edited I'm going to apply those settings to the development settings to all the rest of the uh, images there so what you can do here is if you right click on the image and go down to develop settings copy settings and then select all the rest of the images either by going to edit select all or just control and a command and a on a mac and once i've selected all of them i'm just going to right click again and go down to develop settings and paste the settings and you can see there gives the options for settings i did do a local adjustment which was a grad filter you might remember so i'm going to change that to everything so everything's including local adjustments is added click on OK and it will start applying that now you can see to all of the images in the sequence okay we're nearly there now so having done that I want now to change these raw files into a, into a file format that Photoshop can read as a time-lapse and what I'm going to do is now go to tools Photoshop image processor and you can see there you get this screen comes up and it's found the files I want the 228 there from bridge and I don't want to save it quite in the same folder I've selected a different folder raw conversion folder which I've created and you can save as JPEG PSD or TIFF TIFF would probably give the best image quality and Photoshop can read that but I'm going to save as a JPEG 12 quality 12 is the highest quality so I'm going to leave it as that and I'm just going to run the action and that will now go through you can see saving 
all of those images in a separate folder as high quality uh, JPEGs, which Photoshop can read. Okay, once the batch processing, changing those files is finished, you can just check your folder. And you can see there it's changed, it's created all the JPEG images there in a, the JPEG folder we created. So now all we've got to do is go back into Photoshop and we're going to work on this as a JPEG sequence. So open and raw conversion JPEG. And make sure you click on, so after you clicked on the first one, click on image sequence there as well. And then you can click on it. We're going to leave the frame rate as 24. And there is our JPEG sequence now imported into Photoshop, which we can work on as a normal JPEG sequence, like on there. And for full details how to edit that, you can have a look at the other part of this video, which deals with uh, JPEG editing. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful.